What's the one thing you remember the most about movies, TV shows, and video games? Characters? Story moments? Action set pieces? The acting? All of these are good reasons to remember a piece of media. But for me, it's always been the music that sticks in my head the most. Think about the Game of Thrones opening. God knows I don't want to talk about the ending. You're just ruining it! Without that intro by... Fuck's sake. Ramin Dijawadi? I don't think the show would be as well remembered. The music in Game of Thrones is the only thing that stayed consistently good throughout all eight seasons. But I digress. This isn't a video about Game of Thrones. There are plenty of videos about how crap the final season was. So I'll let them have the watch time. This video is about music in video games. Like Nakey Jakey said, notice how this isn't music video games. I mean, video game music because there is a big, big difference between video game music and music used in video games. And the good news is, unlike TV or movies or podcasts or whatever, video game music isn't normally subjected to YouTube copyright. Hooray! Why is there the sound of a gun cocking behind me? Shit. Unlike movies and TV, video games have to keep the music going for a long period of time. In a movie, you have music for a very specific point in a scene. Because video games aren't as linear as a movie is, they have to constantly be able to repeat the music and never get repetitive for the player. This is hard for a composer to do, but when it's done well, it sounds like an ear orgasm. The two examples I can think of are Mario Galaxy and Skyrim. I don't think the Mario Galaxy music needs much introduction. It's used in so many YouTube videos for background music. I myself am guilty of using it. You're so unoriginal, Jackus. Yeah, I know, dickweed. I use it because it makes my ears feel nice and juicy. I probably could have used a better adjective than juicy. But the composer chooses the perfect selection of instruments and tempo to build every stage differently and makes them feel like their own... well... Galaxy? The beaches of the Beach Bowl Galaxy make you feel warm and comfortable as if you're on the beach with a non-alcoholic beverageino in your hand. This only works because the whole point of Mario Galaxy is to run, jump, and platform in a linear way. But what about a game which is completely non-linear, meaning the music has to slowly melt into the background like a beautiful, melty thing? I would talk about Minecraft, but I've already talked about the Minecraft soundtrack in a previous video. Which you should totally watch, by the way because I need money. So instead, I will be using a Minecraft substitute, which is nothing like Minecraft, but it's open world, so it's basically the same. It is Skyrim, I'm, I'm talking about Skyrim. I literally said it a little bit ago in the chat, it, it, it's Skyrim. With Skyrim's huge open world, the music is more of a supplementary part of the video game experience. It's something you don't notice, but adds to the environment. You can play the game without music, but that would be a bit like having a sandwich with bread in the middle. It's still a sandwich, but there's nothing nice about it. And this isn't saying the soundtrack doesn't have bangers, like the main Dragonborn theme. In their tongue, he's Dovahkiin. Dragonborn! So, we've learned that you can either have a large, bombastic soundtrack to set the scene for a place, like Mario Galaxy, or a quieter background soundtrack, which adds to ambience to a more open-world game. God, I'm using big words. Multiplayer music is something that's extremely hard to do. Depending on whether or not it's a casual game or a competitive game, it changes the entire dynamic of the music used. A competitive game, like Overwatch, uses music during the beginning of the match and then fades out when the action starts so you can concentrate on defeating the enemy. Or, if you're on my team, you miss every shot and can't stay on the payload or heal me because I'm the best player ever and I can't be the one doing anything wrong. Ugh, I hate this game. But I also love it. I think I have an abusive relationship with this game. Oh well. When there's a minute left in the game, the music kicks back in to build suspense and tension while the team scramble to beat the other team into submission. This is the most common form of music used in competitive video games. More casual video games use more majestic and orchestral soundtracks like Battlefield 1. Multiplayer modes that have single player campaigns with them usually just lift the music from the campaign to the multiplayer, 
with probably a few tweaks and changes to make it more, you know, multiplayer-y? That's a word, right? This is the case with most Call of Duty games. I say most, as some choose not to have a single player campaign because they shit the bed too much with the last game. Thanks, Treyarch. Shongs. Songs are an interesting part of video games. And when I'm talking about songs, I ain't talking about Guitar Hero, or Rock Band, or Osu, or Tetris. Normal songs can be used to ground the game in the real world. When I'm walking through the Mojave Desert fighting zombies, huge dino lizards, and old Roman legionaries, the one thing that grounds me in reality is Big Iron playing on Radio New Vegas. There's nothing like Fallout's radio stations to make me feel like I'm stuck in a small time capsule from the 50s. Minus all the bad parts of the 50s, but we don't need to talk about them. Korean War? More like... Korean snore, am I right guys? I sadly can't play any of the music from the Fallout games, as YouTube would copyright this video in about a picosecond. But every game has its iconic song. Fallout New Vegas has Big Iron, Fallout 4 has The Wanderer, and even Fallout 76 has Country Roads. The only good choice Bethesda made with that fucking game. And I think most people will agree with me when I say that one part that makes the GTA games so great is the radio music. With all the stations, it can fit anyone's taste. And I mean anyone's. Lewis can attest to the fact that my music taste is... interesting, to say the least. And even I can find a radio station that I enjoy listening to on GTA. But then there's also original music made for video games. There are quite a few to mention, but there's only one I can think of that's truly perfect. And I think you know what I'm talking about. This is without a doubt the best moment in Super Mario Odyssey. Whoever came up with this at Nintendo needs to get constant air, and I will be in line to give it to them. It's not only a great song, it's such a good Mario song. The visuals and the level of a huge festival and concert in New Dog City, with the pixelated style for most of the level truly making you feel like Batman. <laughs> oh, I need to stop making that joke. No. I mean, it truly makes you feel like you're having a celebration of Mario as a gaming icon and his 35 years of being a shining example of gaming. Why is the first 10 minutes of Up so good? It's a very simple answer. The music elevates the scene by making the emotions flare up, by only having the score with absolutely no dialogue. Music being able to elicit emotions in a player is such a powerful tool games have. Video games are much harder to score for in an emotional sense, as games usually make you the main character instead of watching the main character. But one game that does this almost as well as movies is The Last of Us. I've talked about The Last of Us before on this channel, and especially the music. Spoilers for The Last of Us coming up, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I suggest going for a walk with your dog or cat or fish or any other animal you may be living with, and then when you're back, the spoilers should be gone. Are they gone? Good. So, the ending. Man, killing that nameless surgeon sure was satisfying. Surely nothing bad will happen to our protagonist seven years later going into the sequel. I mean, just imagine if a company decided to do that with this sequel. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck. Controversial video games aside, the whole game up to this point is spent murdering zombies, humans, and big fuck-off blobby things that fart. All of this was done to protect this girl, Ellie. But now, at the end, it all comes down to Joel saving Ellie from having surgery that would kill her. Joel saves 
her from the surgeons and runs out with an unconscious Ellie in his arms, mirroring the beginning of the game when Joel lost his daughter. The music kicks in and oh my lord, it just gets me every time. The way the music swells with Joel's lines and it just gets me in the feels bro. Without the music this part of the game wouldn't hit me in the gut as much. I love you Mr. Santa Olaya for the soundtrack of this game. But sadness is not the only emotion out there. Being pumped and having an adrenaline rush is something music can also make you feel. There are many game tracks that do this well, from boss music to action set pieces, but the best soundtrack that boosts my adrenaline through the roof is 2015's Doom. When Bethesda aren't releasing Skyrim for the bajillionth time, they're playing some hardcore devil music that, if I went back in time and showed it to a medieval peasant, they would probably keel over and die. Doom 2015 soundtrack by Mick Gordon perfectly mirrors the balls to the wall action that goes on in the game. So kids, what have we learned today? Actually, don't answer that. But the whole point of this video wasn't to teach you guys any music theory or whatever. It was just to make you guys aware of how important the music in video games are. I could talk for hours about my favourite video game soundtracks, but it already takes me a millennia to upload a new video, so I won't. But these are some of my favourite soundtracks, which you should definitely check out. So next time you're playing a video game, just close your eyes and listen to the soundtrack. You might find some new enjoyment out of it. Remember when you tried to kill me twice? Oh, how we laughed and laughed, except I wasn't laughing Under the circumstances, I've been shockingly nice You want your freedom?